Jared Isaacman, the accomplished billionaire and astronaut, is now on the verge of becoming the official administrator of NASA. Many observers believe that he will introduce bold and forward-leaning decisions once he assumes leadership. Even today, he is already demonstrating that ambition through his proposal to partner with SpaceX and use Starship to establish a base on Mars. The idea of humans arriving on the Red Planet is no longer distant or impossible. It's becoming a clear and achievable objective. So how will this plan actually work, and why is SpaceX's Starship considered the strongest candidate for such a mission? Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Isaacman's recent updates have captured significant public attention, and for good reason. He has just passed one of the most important milestones on the path to becoming the official administrator of NASA. Earlier this year, his first confirmation hearing did not appear to meet the expectations of either the President or the Senate. The discussion felt uncertain and many questioned whether he could secure enough support to move forward. However, the situation has changed dramatically. His latest Senate committee hearing delivered a far stronger impression, showcasing improved preparation, clearer answers, and a leadership approach that resonated with many members of the committee. The results speak for themselves. The Senate committee has officially voted in favor of Isaacman, with a notable margin of 18 to 10. This outcome means that he has been formally endorsed and nominated by the committee, placing him one step away from becoming the next administrator of NASA. Senator Jerry Moran, who voted for Isaacman, wrote on X that the Senate Commerce Committee advanced Isaacman's nomination after he delivered strong performances in both meetings and hearings. This public endorsement further reinforces the momentum building behind him. If confirmed, Isaacman will bring a combination of youthfulness, enthusiasm, and a forward-looking mindset that many believe will drive meaningful change across NASA. His leadership style suggests a willingness to pursue innovation, embrace new technologies, and accelerate the agency's long-term goals. Among those goals, the highest priority from the U.S. is clear. The nation expects him to ensure that the U.S. maintains its lead over China in the race to the moon. This objective has been emphasized repeatedly at the congressional level. Yet Isaacman has made it equally clear that his aspirations do not stop at the lunar surface. He is already thinking about Mars and looking far beyond the immediate requirements of his potential role. That's why, even before receiving the official title, he has introduced a significant and amb ambitious proposal related to the Red Planet. He wants NASA to establish a contract with SpaceX to use Starship for the construction of a human base on the surface of Mars. An image of the internal proposal document has been shared publicly, offering a glimpse of the plan. In the section discussing SpaceX, the document outlines plans not only for the Moon, the Dragon spacecraft, the deorbit vehicle, and the Starlink constellation, but also for a Mars Mars Discovery Base contract. This initiative is labeled Olympus and is described as a plan centered on in situ resource utilization, or ISRU. It remains unclear whether Olympus refers to the name of the base, the name of the project, or a target location on the Martian surface. Regardless of the interpretation, the implications are substantial. For NASA, this proposal could represent a major breakthrough. The agency has made impressive discoveries on Mars through its rover missions, but it also faces tremendous challenges. The effort to return samples to Earth is moving slowly and at extraordinary cost. Competing proposals are not only expensive but also time-consuming especially when compared to China's increasingly aggressive timeline. With limited budgets and complex operations, NASA's ability to send humans to Mars and build a functioning habitat has seemed distant. That calculation changes dramatically if SpaceX provides direct support. With Starship already in development and rapidly evolving, SpaceX could give NASA the capability to accomplish both a human landing and the construction of a base with far greater efficiency than any other partner. If Starship transports cargo and crew to Mars, the long-standing sample return challenge would also become far easier. Instead of returning only a few kilograms of material, NASA could potentially return tons of samples with each mission. This shift would represent a major scientific advantage and a strategic victory for the U.S. in the competition to explore the Red Planet. For SpaceX, the benefits are just as significant. Although the company has been developing Starship to fulfill its own long-term ambitions and Elon Musk's goal of making humanity multiplanetary, the program becomes far more credible and powerful when supported by NASA. A formal contract would solidify Starship's position within the U.S.'s long-range space strategy. It would also strengthen NASA 
international commitment to the vehicle's development and future missions. NASA's interest in Starship is understandable. Mars is extremely far from Earth, and any serious effort to build a permanent presence requires a large, capable transport system. Only a vehicle with immense capacity can reduce crewed mission duration, minimize risk, and allow large-scale construction. Starship is the only rocket currently in development or operation that can realistically support that level of activity. The rocket has a diameter of 9 meters and a height exceeding 120 meters, and it will eventually reach 141, 140 to 150 meters in its V4 configuration. The ship section alone, which will travel to Mars, stands more than 50 meters tall today, and will approach 60 in V4. This scale allows Starship to offer a payload volume greater than the entirety of the ISS. It can lift more than 100 tons to orbit today, and more than 200 once V4 becomes operational. Even a fraction of that mass sent to Mars would enable substantial surface infrastructure. Starship's design also aligns with Mars' specific needs. It's built from cost-effective stainless steel and runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen, both of which can be produced on Mars through ISRU. This capability would be critical for refueling and long-term self-sufficiency. These characteristics make Starship the most practical and economical option for NASA to pursue not only a Mars base, to pursue not only a Mars base, but also rapid progress on a lunar base. Isaacman's proposal still lacks some key details, such as the value of the contract, the launch requirements, and the completion timeline. Early speculation suggests a target somewhere between 2030 and 2032, potentially ahead of China's planned sample return mission. This timeline aligns with Musk's own expectations. He has stated that the first uncrewed Starship mission to Mars could launch within two years, with the first crewed mission following approximately two years later. More information will likely emerge once Isaacman informally assumes office. Until then, the proposal offers a clear and ambitious vision for the future of American space exploration and for the next era of NASA's partnership with SpaceX. While we wait for final confirmation of Jared Isaacman's appointment, it is worth examining a key question, how SpaceX might actually build the first human base on Mars. The proposal does not outline a fixed construction plan, but Starship's capabilities point to two primary approaches, each with distinct advantages and challenges. The first approach treats Starship mainly as a transport system. Its enormous payload capacity would allow NASA to send large quantities of materials, modular structures, and heavy machinery directly to the Martian surface. Astronauts would then assemble these modules with the help of delivered equipment, which could also support local resource extraction to produce construction materials on site. This method resembles traditional terrestrial construction and could yield reinforced shelters, insulated domes, or underground habitats. Mars, however, is a harsh environment shaped by dust storms, a thin atmosphere, extreme temperature swings, and high radiation levels. These conditions strongly influence habitat design. Many engineers believe that early bases should be built underground or within natural lava tubes to reduce exposure. Surface structures would require thick shielding durable anchoring systems, and materials capable of withstanding decades of radiation and erosion. This method would require many Starship flights, multiple assembly missions, and significant time before a fully functional base is complete. The second approach is far more streamlined and, for many, more compelling. Instead of transporting separate modules, SpaceX could convert Starship itself into the first Martian habitat. The crew compartment already offers more internal volume than the ISS and provides enough space for sustained research and long-term operations. A mission-specific Starship would launch from Earth, land on Mars, and then be positioned horizontally to form the core of the base. After landing, astronauts would transform the vehicle into a permanent habitat. Internal tanks could be removed or reconfigured, systems rearranged, and structural supports added to expand livable space. Life support systems, laboratories, medical areas, and crew quarters could all be integrated before launch, minimizing construction work on Mars. The stainless steel hull would serve as a durable outer shell, while methane oxygen systems could support local fuel production and create reliable supply cycles. Additional radiation shielding, such as regolith layers or protective coatings, could be added once the Starship is in place. Compared to the traditional construction 
production approach, this method is significantly faster. A single optimized Starship could deliver an almost complete base structure with only one or two follow-up flights needed for equipment and supplies. Starship becomes both the transport vehicle and the habitat, spacious, structurally robust, and scalable. Its design already suits Martian conditions, making it an ideal candidate for humanity's first off-world home. Which method is more appealing? Both are viable, but the second offers clearer efficiency, lower mission risk, and stronger alignment with Starship's present capabilities. Over time, as more people and cargo reach Mars, new types of bases will emerge, expanding human presence and eventually reshaping the planet through terraforming. We may one day see domes, pressurized cities, agricultural systems, and industrial zones, but all of that begins with the first functional base, built on safety, efficiency, and reliability. Getting there will demand major progress from both NASA and SpaceX. NASA's proposal can advance only if Isaacman is confirmed as administrator. His confirmation looks increasingly likely, but political uncertainty always remains. If another candidate takes the role, the fate of the Mars proposal could shift. The plan would require approval across agencies and committees, and only broad institutional agreement will turn it into reality. SpaceX, meanwhile, must accelerate Starship's development. The system still has several milestones ahead, consistent orbital flights, real payload deployment, full carrying capability, reliable reuse of both stages, and most critically, successful orbital refilling. Without refilling, Mars missions are impossible. These goals are tied to the Starship V3 program targeted for 2026, making the coming year a period of intense engineering and operational buildup. At the same time, SpaceX must meet its Artemis commitments, returning humans to the moon and supporting lunar-based development. This raises a long-standing question. Should the U.S. prioritize the moon or Mars? SpaceX may soon need to support both, requiring larger teams, a higher launch cadence, and precise coordination with NASA. To succeed, SpaceX must hold scheduled discipline and ensure Starship is fully operational when NASA approves the Mars Base Initiative. With this proposal, NASA and SpaceX signal ambitions that go beyond exploration. They aim to send humans to Mars, build a sustainable presence, and eventually establish a new branch of civilization. But to reach that future, they must navigate technical hurdles, political realities, and increasing global competition. The question is no longer just about technology. It's about readiness. As a Martian base shifts from concept to possibility, the essential question becomes, are we prepared to take the next giant leap? In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.